Thank <laughs> you.
Beautiful. Everybody, welcome back uh, to the Tuesday, June 20th, 2023 uh, select board meeting. Um, if um, I was talking and you couldn't hear me earlier, we had a little technical difficulty, uh, but we just got out of uh, executive session. And I'll repeat again that uh, our um, meeting is being uh, televised and with audio from uh, Fox Row Cable Access. So with Steph standing already, Steph, why don't you lead us in the... Uh, I would love to. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, awesome. So um, anybody here for a citizen's input? Anything uh, emailed uh, to us, Christina? Nothing. Okay. I'm going to actually step off for, off for this first one, too, just as a direct butter. Oh, yeah, sure. So. Yeah. Uh, so um, <clears throat> is um, Fox Cafe here? Yep. You guys right in front of us? Yes, yes ma'am. Awesome. Come on up. <clears throat> uh, you'll be next on the agenda. Uh, have a seat. I'll have you uh, introduce yourselves. And, Wait, which uh, building is this? Uh, Remo's. Remo? Oh, six Whoa. I don't know about that building. <laughs> uh, Were it man. visible? So, um, welcome. Thank you. Um, some of us have been going to Primo's for 35 years or more. So it was a little bit of a surprise when we heard. But welcome. This is outstanding. Tell us a little bit who you are and a little bit about what's going on. Uh, we are... Uh... Residents of Walpool at the moment. Yeah, and your names? Uh, Lydia and I'm Sergey. Okay. So we've been living in Massachusetts since 2016, and we used to live in Washington, D.C. before. And uh, I'm actually a commercial fisherman. For uh, 20 years? For 20 years out of, out New, of Bedford? New Bedford. And uh, Lydia, she used to work at the restaurants before, and we always had an idea, like, maybe we can get some, some, some breakfast place or something. And now we got two kids, 10 and 7 years old, and we feel like it is a time for us to open something and it will be great for the kids uh, to grow with business and she, she loves it, so. Awesome. But I'll still gonna be doing fishing. And you will. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help as much as I can. So tell us a little bit about the restaurant itself. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna run as a prima. Yeah. Just we're gonna keep their menu, their systems, their great food. Uh, gonna add a little bit more like soups, run specials. Like, you know, for, uh, for example, Tuesday, like taco day, Thursday, Mediterranean meal. Just see like, run like different dishes and see like what Foxborough tastes, love to try. We're gonna, um, there's a lot of uh, sports around. So we would love to offer like some fitness, you know, uh, group meals too, healthy options eventually. Um, we're gonna try, I mean, we're gonna keep everything as it is and adjust as we go. We, uh, we're gonna computerize and have um, online orders. Okay, yep. And of course, the first thing, we're just gonna clean that place and uh, do some Upgrade paint Upgrade the job. building. Yeah, a little, little bit. Little, little <coughs> small TLCs. Like changing the roof. Well, the big project is changing the roof first. And so then, you're going to shut down a little bit first and then reopen. Yes. Yes. Because yes. we want to change the inside a little bit. Just put a little different, updated, upgraded furniture in there. Yep. Just paint the building inside. Upgrade the bathrooms probably. Just make it look nicer. Make it look fresh again. Right. 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 When do you hope to open? End of July, if we get all construction, get done and trained everybody, the people, so. No. That's fast, that's really fast. I know, I'm very, I am very hopeful. But we're gonna optimistic. See. Optimistic, I know, but <laughs> the construction is, uh, we, we, we've been done a lot of projects, we know it's <laughs> one thing, but then, uh, that's why we basically, that's why we actually, when we <clears throat> thought about kitchen, like we're gonna keep a kitchen as is, because we need to learn workflow, and like, you know, yeah. First, so we basically do just going to do cosmetics at the front and bathrooms. And then, like, you know, as we learn the workflow and we're going to do um, 
maybe adjustment to the kitchen add like you know like with the like with the kitchen architect we're going to adjust later so this is something we're not gonna jump at the beginning it's just only like um seating area where we gonna do you know like TLC. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, so I was just looking at the hours of operation. So I know you said you were going to keep Primo's food, but you're going to add on as well. So you're going to open up in the morning for uh, for some type of breakfast service. Right. Too. We want to add some just dishes with eggs. So we, we kind of want to like, okay, how would you like? Because we're not going to like, you know, hopefully it's going to be slow so we can uh, offer like a little options with different eggs. Um, and then bring some little pastry and we thinking to bring lavaza coffee oh, yeah. with the you mm -hmm. know coffee like espresso machine mm -hmm. so, so have, we have a the house of operation we probably because i think he closed on mondays so we think we were thinking Sunday more Monday, like yeah. open up a little earlier but probably run it <clears throat> till the same like 4 p.m because you have the upscale kind of upscale restaurant next to it. So that's your big competition. So you usually, in this place, you're looking more for breakfast and lunch people. Mm. And then uh, for the dinner, it's the next place over. Right. Yeah. So we, we were thinking breakfast yeah, like and lunch. Yeah, like our focus is right now, like establish as a nice coffee shop with great sandwiches and lunch, lunch options. Because yeah, she was really thinking to bring some coffee into the place. To, like uh, she's working with a couple of companies who probably will be one of our uh, distributors distributor for the coffee because we want to sell coffee as well. Yeah. So you're gonna so you're gonna close on Tuesdays, or or, or that's what you think right, right. now. Right. This is what we we're gonna, yeah. we, I, we definitely need one day off, like yeah. you know, like just break down. So so we thought like from feedback from Chris, like Tuesday is a kind of slow day. So we thought maybe like we'll do it on Tuesday and then um, I'm gonna see like how, um, you know, de depend on many factors, <laughs> how it's and run. At the oh, same you know something I was gonna yeah. tell you, a lot of places they are, especially since COVID, some places like where I work, they're closed, they've been closed on Mondays forever, for 90 years, always closed on Mondays. But some I've noticed since COVID, a lot of places are closing one day and they're picking Monday. And Monday and Tuesdays are, you tend to be slower days, but <coughs> closing on Tuesday is a good idea because a lot of places are closed on Mondays. So that gives you, you know what I mean, that gives you the option that people will come to you on Monday because some of the other places are closed. Right, the, so. this is what Chris said, like he, he's noticed that he feels like there's more missed calls on Monday than he get like on Tuesday. So we're like, okay, so based on his feedback. Yeah. Yeah, and then once you guys get in, you'll you'll figure you'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah. So it's kind of just I was gonna say, the main is all of this like things in progress, right? And then like we need, you know, people build the community. I'm hoping like you know, make it like, build community board, make like some sustainability, you know, environmental adjustments too. Like make it um, friend, kids friendly, and you know, we really see that there's a lot, lot of schools, sport. Um, great centers and we would like to have you know them come and is it so sure awesome yeah, yeah. good <clears throat> any parking issues you have adequate parking 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 uh, i think it is five additional parking spaces mm -hmm. also we talk uh, to the bank mm -hmm. that, that big parking uh, on the other side of the street we talked to the bank uh, manager and she says usually it is no problem if somebody parks there for like half an hour because they have plenty of space and they told us we'll work with them okay. maybe if we could share the parking <laughs> yeah, if, it, if it gets that we're busy. Not, we're not gonna advertise yeah. but I just see like people sometimes do that for convenience I mean there is um, what Chris told us it has the, the property comes with five, five parking, parking spots and he has a, um, in front signature for like 10 minutes so it's more like for pickup for quick mm -hmm. and as I said since we're gonna have a computer right so we're hoping um, build up some online presence and have just quick pickup orders too right. Right. And I feel like it's con convenience especially with the circle rates there's like four streets so a lot of um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of pie. It's a it's a it's a short walk. If, you know, people they can't find a spot mm -hmm. up front. There's we've done so much about parking around that common, so right. they'll find their way to you for right. sure. All right. It's exciting. Thank you. To, uh, Any suggestion? Maybe would that you'd like anything to add? <laughs> have something like you know from your perspectives? What would you well, like to? For me right now, nothing, but I'm excited to hear you've got some ideas already yeah. that you're gonna change change it up. So it'll be exciting to see some different things that on different days. Yeah, I kind of want to have a little like, like sport theme too. So like we want to do like some posters, make like, you know. Because uh, we're so close to Patriot's place. Yeah, I mean, all like, like sports and we kind of want to like get this <laughs> vibe of, um, and then we do have actually in the building great um, boot camp. Uh, <coughs> and we'd, we'd like have her more, you know, visible too. Yeah. Uh, one of our tenants, she she does like uh, she has like a little gym in there. Kickboxing and um, you know gym and maybe like I don't know we're gonna talk about maybe we can she can share the gym and have like like a little yoga too and you know so we guess I mean she not use that much and when maybe we can have um, more use out of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely we would like you know have activity. Wrong. Uh, next, you have another breakfast place. Local, local. I would just say that it, it sure. just sounds like maybe you grew up from uh, somewhere other than Foxborough, mm -hmm. um, and so to, to the extent that you have, uh, you know, cuisine from somewhere that's you know that's different, unique, um, you could bring into town and just add a different flavor to. You know the places that you have to your that, establishment that, that would be interesting that's what she's saying we're gonna start running some specials uh, and see what people like and people really like it we're just gonna bring it into the menu uh, yeah. Right, yeah like so like, one day like it's, we're gonna do like one recipe of taco and see like what f feedback on that mm -hmm. and there's some certain mediterranean and like there's great really um we know the kids love especially some acai balls and the gansett uh poke balls it's kind of oh, yeah. like become trendy but yes. i mean <clears throat> That is like certain like limitation to what we can bring. So we could, that's why we're gonna test and see like you know if there is any like favorite things. We more, may more focus on that route. Yeah. But as I, as I said, as of right now we're gonna um, have one thing per week. Mm -hmm. That's great. Awesome. Good for you. Bye. <coughs> Come on, reading. <coughs> okay. Motion to approve the common. Virtual application for Fox Cafe Inc. doing business as Fox Cafe at 6 Mechanic Street. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Thank you. looking forward. And we always say that if you want to have a grand opening, we have a big set of scissors for uh, a ribbon cutting if you want to do that one. Day would be. <laughs> that sounds nice. great. Nice. Uh, Any chamber would you recommend? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Any chamber would you recommend to, to join in Foxborough? Oh. What is happening? The chamber at oh. Fox, Foxborough Common Business Collaborative. So Foxborough. So Foxborough Common Business Collaborative is just uptown. Okay. So I can get you guys information on that. And then the Tritown Chamber of Commerce is great too. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, yeah, there's a downtown collaborative that uh, Leah, Leah stepped out because she's a neighbor. So So due to, due to that, that's why she stepped away. Not because she doesn't like primos. Yeah. Yeah. All right, great. Congratulations. Thank Looking you. forward. Thank you very much. Let us know when you want a ribbon cutting. Yep. Yes, we'll definitely. And we'll get all permission and everything, the, like, you know, lines. And... Awesome. Have a good night. Yep. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good night. Have You're good welcome. Night. Thank you. Nice to meet you. All right, a uh, couple of seconds behind, but we've got um, a public hearing um, that we will. Do you have the, you, know, you might not have it in front of you yet, do you? To read the public. Uh... I don't see it. We're looking for the public he hearing. Oh, notice. sorry. No, it's all right. We're going to bring it up. It's, it's not there. What page is it on? I got it. Let's see. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a public hearing for this one? Okay. No, this yes, is a use of public way. It's posted at the public hearing, I believe. No? 
I didn't see it. No. Public hearing. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I apologies. Yeah, I don't believe the, the public. Oh, the public no. way. Okay, yeah. <laughs> public no, no. way, not a public hearing. Gotcha. Great. Okay. The one day light. Yeah, exactly. All right, so this is a um, request for a one-day uh, beer and wine license from um, uh, Rodman Ride for Kids. It's something we've done in the past. Are they on? Um, yeah, there you are. Oh, can't hear you yet. You can't hear me? Now we can. There you go. Okay, now I'll talk can. louder. No, 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 you, I think you're on mute. We can hear you now. So, okay, um, good. Welcome back once again for the Rodman Ride. What, Introduce yourself and give us a little thumbnail once again. Yep, thank you. Uh, my name is Marisa Collins. I am the operations manager for Rodman for Kids. Um, this will be our 33rd annual. So since 91, um, we've raised over $150 million, um, all to help kids who really need it the most, all in our community. Um, this will be the second year that we're starting and finishing at um, 38 Neponset Street at um, Schneider Ele Electric. As we, I, I know a lot of people think we're affiliated with Rodman <coughs> Ford. We have no affiliation with them. Um, so you know, we're we're so lucky to have Schneider who stepped up and you know has been a wonderful host host to us. Um, so the event will start and finish at 38 Neponset Street. Um, we do have beer and wine that is arriving, would be arriving on location the day before that Friday. So I applied for two one day um, permits. So that will be kept, whatever arrives on Friday, we have a large refrigerated truck so that will be kept um, in the refrigerated truck along with some of the other food items that arrive um, or that we pick up the day before. And then on Saturday, as the barbecue starts, the beer and wine will be moved to iced coolers. And once we start serving the beer and wine, I actually, had, I think it was last year, maybe the year before, I had some good suggestions from the board um, about the serving of the beer and wine. As of right now, we don't have anyone that's TIP certified, um, but all of our volunteers are volunteers that have worked a beer and wine tent in the past, all over the age of 25. Um, they're instructed to ask for ID anyone that looks 40 years or older. And one of a, it was a great actual, actually suggestion from someone on the board was to have some extra volunteers, just making sure that nobody is overserved. Um, it's probably our most well-staffed part of that day. And it's kind of separate. So it's not in the middle of the um, barbecue where all the other drinks are served. It's separate. So people are served. They're not given a can. It's poured into a cup. Um, they're only given one at a time. Um, so, and like I said, I mean, we're working on trying to find someone that's TIP certified, but as of right now, we do not have anybody. So I would think someone needs to be, like I would approve it based on that someone will be TIP certified before the event. Would be my recommendation, just to be consistent with how we treat these. Yeah, Marissa, did, did you have TIP certified people last year? No, I, I don't think we ever have. So We do have someone that, um, that oversees our barbecue. Um, he owns restaurants within Boston and he, I can ask him, it, it's right next to, next to where the, um, beer and wine is, you know, he has the certificate of allergen awareness and a serve safe, serve safe certification. I, I don't know if he's tip certified. I, I think you should find someone who's going to take that lead role and you can literally take it online from the comfort of your own home and pay the, I forget whatever it is, $69 or $39. It's not super expensive, but I do think it's important that someone is leading and, and tip certified. That's just my opinion. We require that for, for everyone, and I think that this should be no different. We have if plenty you, of time. If, so, if, yeah. any, if any of your volunteers work in that service, they'll, they may, they'll be TIP certified. You know what I mean? If you have anybody that's volunteering that works in, in a restaurant or on a bar, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, uh, okay. even, yeah, anybody, even if you're not behind a bar, if you're serving the alcohol, <clears throat> it's a waitress or something. And you know something, too? I'm not sure how the insurance works for you guys when you're getting your insurance policy, 
So I know restaurants get a break on their insurance. That's why they require everybody to be TIP certified because if your entire establishment is, you get you you get a better um, rate on your insurance. I don't. I know you guys must have to pull. I don't know if it works for for this type of event or not. If that matters, but I kind of agree with Leah. It'd be yeah. nice if you have just somebody that, <coughs> yeah. even if that person is the one who's who's walking around, kind of just observing, because it, you know if they if they work in the industry that they're tip certified, they're going to pick up on maybe somebody that looks like they might might be overserved. Or, you know, I know it's a, it's a volunteer thing. It's a great cause, but just just for your protection too for your event. Might be a good idea. Yeah, Marissa, I actually yeah, got sure. I actually got certified to do it as a volunteer. That's why I have it, and you you do have it for a couple of years. I did mine through Serve Safe, so um, oh. I do think it. I, I'm firm that I think it is important that it's something we should do. Yeah, I'll for sure do that. And then um, once we have a volunteer um, that is tip certified, I could forward that to Katie. Yeah. And you have plenty of, like Lisa said, you can mm -hmm. take it on plenty of time, be, you know, before your event. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And if it's somebody that's going to, you think will be with you every year, that'd be a good person to have it. Because like Leah said, is it like five years or something? I think it's two or three. I forget. I don't know. Yeah, I make my kids all volunteer, so I'll have one of them do it. <laughs> you learned some good stuff, too. I mean, I'm just glad I did it. Yeah. Any other questions? So right. we, we could make a motion with that as a caveat. Yeah, we can. Do we want to talk about the race and do them back to back or just do the, take them one at a time? There's two motions for this one. Right. Uh, you want to talk about the race a little bit too and then we'll put do the motions back to back? You're talking to me, right? Yes. Okay. So talk a little um, bit. Of so Go ahead. The route changed a little bit and, you know, Foxborough Police was amazing working. Um, we have a, another person on our staff here who worked with Foxborough Police to determine the best places for the details. So we're expecting, um, I'm guessing on the high side, it hasn't come back since COVID. Um, I don't expect over a thousand riders. On the high side, I would say 900 riders and 400 volunteers. So probably about 1,300 people on site that day. Um, so there is a 50 and a 25. We used to have 100 that started at, I think, 7 or 7.30. Now the 50 will start at 9, and then the 25 starts at 10.15. So usually everybody is back. It's very rare that not everyone is back um, at the barbecue area by 3 o'clock. Um, so, you know, I guess depending on, I can't say where the, the details will be, but, um, the Foxborough police have been great working with us and, and they pretty much tell us where they think they should be. Any questions? No. So we do have two motions. I'll just go through them one at a time. We'll vote on each one. Yep. Motion to approve the use of public way application for the Robin ride for kids on September 23rd from 7 AM to 4 PM. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. And just to clarify, because it's not in our motion or anywhere, um, so it's it's the Neponset Street. We didn't really talk about where it is, just as I am looking at it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's 38. The actual barbecue is set up at 38 Neponset Street, and that's where um, it starts, and the riders head off towards Chestnut Street. But the parking is at the, I don't know what that address is, um, across from the Y, that location. So that lot kind of abuts where there is a nice path that goes right to Neponset Street. So they allow us to park there. We have volunteers there and signage, and then they're directed to 38 Neponset Street. Okay, and for the purposes of this, so basically they're gonna come out of Neponset and go towards Sharon, and then they go through Sharon and Easton and Norton and Taunton and Rainham and Bridgewater, and then they come back in through like Easton and Rockland Street, and that's end of um, Sharon. So this is this is for that that side of town, just to kind of clarify where it is. Yeah. All right. So we had a motion. Motion. No, no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
All right, then the second is the motion to approve the two one-day beer and wine license for the Robin Ride for Kids on September 22nd and September 23rd for alcohol service from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., contingent upon proof of the TIP certification for one lead volunteer before the event. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Sounds good? Good. Thank you. All righty. Thank you all. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <clears throat> All right. A couple of minutes late, but uh, sewer service agreement review and potential vote to approve the following agreement. Chris, you're on the hot seat. You got to remind us. I better do well. Years ago, <clears throat> we already. The guy sitting by him, he's known me since I was born. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Westwood transplant, too. <laughs> All right. Um, hello. Um, so you guys should have Up seen. Who oh, are you? And oh, uh, Chris Gallagher. I'm the <laughs> director of public works. Um, before you tonight to discuss an intermunicipal agreement between Fox Road and Sharon uh, for sewer. So the DPW um, has been working through our special town council, Stephen Medaus, um, with Mary O'Connell over really over the last couple of years now uh, to draft an amendment to the IMA um, that was created in 2018. Um, in 2018, we drafted that agreement because we had bought capacity back from the Skanko properties, which included the Independent Forge Association, Cannon Forge, Summerfield, and Quail Ridge, which is the association in Sharon. Um, at the time, the document really didn't give us a process to how we would sell to other properties outside of Foxborough, um, how we would um, move that through the, the existing IMA, um, including responsibilities of, you know, what is Foxborough sewer, what is Sharon sewer, what is private sewer. <laughs> uh, so when the Sharon Gallery project came forward two plus years ago now, um, looking for sewer capacity, it opened up that IMA again for some revisions, um, an amendment, and then um, it stalled out a little bit after the, this board and the Water and Sewer Commission has voted to sell that capacity outside of Foxborough. It stalled. They had some zoning issues they were working through. They had some master T things they were working through. The, so the project stalled a little bit. Over the last six to eight months, it's been moving along pretty well. Um, finally, we have all of the parties involved, um, have come to an, a, an agreement, a consensus on the document itself, along with how we move forward in the future if more properties were to come forward and look for sewer within Fox Rose service area. Um, so what you have is a, um, let's see, an amended and <coughs> restated intermunicipal agreement between buy-in between the town of Foxborough and town of Sharon for municipal sewer service. Um, that keeps the original document in place with regards to the Quail Ridge property, which was the initial out-of-town service area. Um, we then wanted a way to add in future properties. So the um, um, addendum one is actually the addition of the Sharon Gallery pro properties um, with the intention that if there are other properties in the future, we would do an addendum and just add, instead of revising the whole IMA, um, we really wanted a, a general document that would let us add those in without reopening the whole thing. Um, so those are the, the actual IMA. The third document you have is the agreement between the town of Foxborough and the and 95 LOC, which is the owner of that Sharon Gallery project. Um, going back to the 2021 vote that this board took as well as the Water and Sewer Commissioners, this document just formalizes that agreement. Um, it does have in there <coughs> um, their responsibilities for upgrades downstream from their property. There was an, an analysis done that showed there were some pipeline um, segments that needed to be upgraded. Um, there was some work at the um, pump station within the Sharon property that needed some, some work and it just documents as they phase in their flow, um, 
when those upgrades need to be done um, in relationship to that project in their construction phasing. Um, so going back, we are agreeing to sell them 34,800 gallons per day. It is less than what we bought back from the Skanko properties going back to 2018. So really we're just reallocating that flow back to the del area that it was already coming from. Um, one thing that is changing in this agreement, <clears throat> um, and it's something we're working out, so there's kind of one, one last step um, with the Quail Ridge Association, and then we'll move it forward with the Cannon Forge Summerfield Associations as well, is that we have been billing them on a lump sum for sewer usage. So we calculate, meter the flow that goes through the lift station, we send an, one bill to the IFA, they then say, tell the Quail Ridge Association how much they owe, and they pay a lump sum back to Foxborough. With this process, Sharon will actually start billing each individual water user in Sharon for sewer flow. Um, so <clears throat> Sharon will read the meters. They'll bill for water and sewer. When they collect the revenue, they'll then turn that revenue over to the town of Foxborough. Um, similar to how we do things with the town of Mansfield with water usage. So some, there are some Mansfield properties that have our meters. There are some Foxborough properties that have Mansfield meters. We bill the same way. Um, that way they remain our customers. Those sharing customers will remain sharing customers. They have their, the water meters. Then we don't, we're not duplicating the effort. Um, so that is one change just from how we're billing now. It's an operational thing that... Uh, both of Sharon DPW and we have agreed to, to move forward with. Um, so Chris, quick question. Yep. So do right now, like I, I know Cannon Ford, Summerfield, we all pay the same. It's not, you know what I mean? The bill comes from you guys to divvy it up. Is that how it's going to be in... Um, Quail. And Quail Ridge too? No, or? so what... <clears throat> what mean, we'll, so it's going to go to Sharon, then Sharon's going to forward it? Or? So what we'll do moving forward is both the Quail Ridge Association and the new property will pay their sewer flow based on their water usage. So each individual house, each individual bid building within the, that new development will all have a water and sewer bill. Um, they will no longer pay a lump sum for their sewer flow. Just out of curiosity, <clears throat> I mean, I probably should know this, but I'm, I'm, I've never served on our IFA board. Were they just paying, like, so there was no type of monitoring how much sewage they used? So there, there's a sewer meter at the town line. Okay. <clears throat> so they are, the property manager was reading that meter on a daily basis. Yeah, okay. And then when the bill would go from IFA to Quail Ridge, they would know how they, much that flow yeah. is, and, and they were billing based on that, yeah. that flow. I was thinking, I know, that, I know when we first moved in there, there was a big to-do because the build, I don't think the builder speculated, I don't think the town of Mansfield realized that they were building three and four bedroom homes mm -hmm. and Summerfield and Can Forge were two bedroom homes. Right. And so I don't think they realized what the flow was actually going to be. And I know there was some, you know, uh, discussion because I think, you know, they were trying to figure out how they were going to build you know, bill separately. Obviously, you can't just take the number of homes between the two. You get homes that are, you know, two rooms more than the other ones. So the, I might be jumping ahead. The only question I really had was I saw in here about the maintenance of, of um, so if there's a problem in Quail Ridge, Foxborough is going to, going to look into that? I mean, as yes. far as the, the <clears throat> lines. Yeah, so the, the gravity line from Gavin's Pond Road at the end point there, all the way down to Cannon Forge. Mm -hmm. um, Foxborough will maintain. Um, there's a little discrepancy from between Quail Ridge and the town of Sharon as to who actually owns that, who has the financial responsibility for that. Quail Ridge has already always paid for that maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, there's, like I said, a discrepancy as to who owns it. Um, there is an agreement from 1991 between Foxborough, Sharon, and Quail Ridge that um, we will, we are looking to rescind so that Quail Ridge no longer has any financial burden on that system. So that'll be part of... Which is kind of similar to what you, what you did with Cannon Forge. Correct. In Summerfield when you bought the capacity. Yeah, the, we, we, both the town of Foxborough and Sharon thought that we had 
move that forward with Quail, Quail Ridge as well. Um, the property manager was the same property manager at the time, mm -hmm. and it does not appear they had received that information back in 2018. <clears throat> Um, so we just need, there's one document from 32 years ago that we need to rescind. Um, yeah. Sharon, our attorney, town council for Sharon, and the Quail Ridge attorney are finalizing that document now. Um, they're going to do that before Sharon votes to approve the IMA. Um, so there is that one last piece that's, that's still out there. And I got a call as late as 3 o'clock this afternoon from our town council that said, you know, laid that out that there's one one little piece left um, so and, and the other the other thing is um, again I'll probably hear from it somewhere down the road I'm not on the IFA board same thing I think we asked I think there was some and I don't know if it's true or not there was some discussion that the pipes were going to have to be made bigger to for that flow to come all the way through mm -hmm. so if like right now um, Canna Forge and IFA take care of the roads like you guys would come in if there was an issue with the with the system right so if there's an issue in um, Sharon that's making you have to do something with the pipes is the town also going to take care of any any up digging fixing roads or whatever in in um, well, that's all IFA anyhow that would go out, go out there. You would never be any in anywhere to do with. Yeah, so field, we're responsible for the pipe. This will, you know, kind of formalize <clears throat> the response for the pipe from Cocasset Street all the way to the end of the gravity line in Sharon. Um, if there are any main breaks, if there are anything, any you know, future upgrades that are needed, you know, we would be responsible for everything from the pipe all the way up to the pavement. Okay. So, um, same thing. Including the pavement. <clears throat> including the pavement. Okay. In, in, yeah, in that stretch. So, yeah, what I'm I, asking is there, there's some talk about them doing the road. They're going right. to, I think they're going to chip seal, but then at some point they're going to have to do the roads over there. Mm -hmm. My point would be if, if and, and that's on the cost of the residents in there. So, if the roads get done again <clears throat> and then you guys have to dig them up. Yeah, and that's a conversation also, when, yeah. when the developer is ready to put that upsize those pipes he has looking looking at different options he can pipe burst it where he doesn't have to dig you know a 200 foot trench to replace that piece of pipe yeah. um, but if he does then we would have the conversation with cannon forge ifa to um yeah we well would that, why, that why i was bringing it up because i don't i know i don't have to tell you how to do your job but in my head i was like if if that might be an issue that might be something that it's mitigation money that would come from the developer and Sharon, mm -hmm. not that the town of Foxville would have to, like if you have to change pipes in there for them, right? That maybe so. Yeah, so that's that, between you guys and attorneys and yep. stuff. Yeah, and the sale, the agreement to sell the sewer capacity outlines, you know, specifically what they have to do for up those upgrades, yeah. um, and they know they're responsible for, you know, from the pavement down to the sewer main. Um, you know, an interesting thing about this is that. Um, they have to pump from their property all the way down to that gravity system, so they're going to have a force main. Um, Sharon will actually own the force main because it's in the public right away, but the agreements all push back, put back on the developer that they are responsible for any maintenance of the system, so they are financially on the hook for that system, although Sharon will own it. Yeah. Okay. So, Chris, this looks like uh, you covered all the bases here. It looks like a good arrangement on the surface. Um, my only question would be, are there any long-term impacts on Foxborough residents in terms of uh, available water and sewer capacity? It shouldn't be. So we don't, we don't supply water to this property um, or, or the Sharon properties. Um, 34,000 gallons is, is a, on the water side, a small amount for what we produce, even if it was, was on us. Um, as far as sewer goes, um, when we expanded the um, MFN treatment plant, um, Foxborough gained 170,000 gallons per day. When we bought back the capacity from the Skanko properties, we added another 60,000 gallons per day. And then also in the MFN agreement, we also gained unused Title V capacity. So historically, when we sold sewer, we were selling it at Title V capacity, which is 110 gallons per, per bedroom. Um, that's not what people use. Um, so when we sell sewer, we actually sell it at 65 gallons per bedroom. Um, so we, my predecessor, Roger, did, did all the math, figured out how much we were using, how much we had sold to the town of Mansfield over the years, and 
we actually gain that capacity back. So, um, you know, we currently have somewhere between three and 400,000 gallons per day of available sewer flow. Um, and, you know, in the words of, of Mike Stanton, the chair of the Water and Sewer Commission, he's in the business of selling water and sewer. <laughs> so if he can sell it, he's gonna. Um, with that in mind, there is a debt from that plan expansion. So we're selling capacity to pay off that debt. So this is actually, a, this is a good thing. This is out of a, a five and a quarter million dollar debt. This is almost one and a half million dollars of that debt that does not fall back on our ratepayers within the town of Foxborough. Um, so that's pretty significant. And you know what, Dennis, it, how, how the capacity, of course, when it was brought up, the agreement that was when they built Summerfield and Cannon Forge was that if we weren't using the capacity, the town had the right to buy it back. Mm -hmm. And it, it was funny because it was bought back at like $5 and change mm -hmm. and sold for $45. So there was lots of people in Cannon Forge that were like, well, we sold it for five. And for, first of all, that was the agreement that was made before. The number was put in. But I ex was explaining at a meeting, but you have to realize that money, that, that extra money is also helping you as a taxpayer. And, and you know, when you, you're our water systems and stuff, everything <coughs> that you guys do. So mm -hmm. I will guarantee you, anybody in Summerfield or Cannon Forge, we, the, we weren't even touching the capacity. That's why it got sold. So it, it, I can always speak that whole area because that's the direct butter of this project, and it'll it should never ever affect any any of the 300 plus homes in there. All right. Any other questions? Are we ready for both motions? I think when you're ready. For so I guess I would I would just preference it if if you're ready to vote tonight, I'm happy to take it. If you are seeing it for the first time and I you know I never like coming back but always like coming back so <laughs> no, you know good. if you guys are ready to vote I'm good, I'm good. we just have okay. two separate motions Correct. oh let me yep. ask one other quick question so all of all of this has somebody on IFA seen this agreement I know it's not directly with them or as far no, as what, the, any no impact? this has nothing to do with the <laughs> existing agreement with with IFA on okay. for the Foxborough properties okay all right, so the, I'm going to go two motions. Motion to approve the agreement, the intermunicipal agreement, as approved by the Foxborough Board of Water and Sewer Commissioners, entitled Amended and, and Restated Intermunicipal Agreement by and between the Town of Foxborough and the Town of Sharon for Municipal Sewer Service as presented, including addendum number one thereto, and authorize the town manager to execute said agreement on behalf of the Town of Foxborough. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then the second one, motion to approve the agreement entered into by the Foxborough Board of Water and Sewer Commissioners and 95 LLC entitled Agreement for Conveyance of Wastewater to the MFN Wastewater Treatment Plant as presented and authorize the town manager to execute said agreement on behalf of the town of Foxborough. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> right. Right. Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to just suggest that we do tell me uh, Selectman's update and have him talk about that one. Uh, that, that's not I was going to mention that. Before. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Now, oh, well, I was too excited just... to talk about sewer. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think we should talk about it right now, too. Can you just yeah. talk about the lot? Yes. Make that announcement. Um, so yeah. This isn't on the agenda because we didn't have the news late yes. breaking. Yes. Um, we are going to be paving the veterans' parking lot um, behind the stores on Central Street, Cocasa Street, Wall Street. Um, the highway crew will be, DPW crew will be in there starting at 11 o'clock tomorrow night. Um, we have some prep work to do back there. And then the paving company is gonna be in first thing Thursday morning to pave that parking lot, which means that anybody who typically parks there either overnight or during the day um, needs to get their car out of there by 10 o'clock tomorrow night, Wednesday night. How um, about our favorite topic, dumpsters? So the we have a couple dumpsters that we are going to move out of the way okay. on a temporary basis while the work is done, and then we can put them back. And we've talked to a couple of the property owners that let them know that we're going to have to move them temporarily, and um, we're working with them. So and obviously, all the uh, uh, businesses know you're going to be in there for a day. Yep. Is that going to have to settle for a day or two? So too? we're going to we'll leave it closed until first thing Friday morning. Okay. 
And when we come in Friday morning, we'll go ahead and open it back up. The striping is to be determined. Um, typically, that has to you know set for a few days, a week before you actually put paint on. Otherwise, otherwise it turns brown very quickly. Um, so. It may be chaos parking back there. Try to remember where those spaces are <laughs> and, and don't use too much space. You know, park, you know, where you think you fit. Um, but we'll get out there and stripe that. Um, it'll be the same configuration that's kind of been determined that there's, there's not much of a better way to park it back there and fit more spaces. So we'll put it back the way it is. And because we spend so much time back in that parking lot, there are a couple of cars sometimes that don't move. Uh, the, like I noticed there was nothing on that back wall yep there was a trail that had been back there That's that has cable, since yep, yep that has okay. been moved um so the we were going to talk to the um is it the army is yep, that the yep. recruiters um to get their vehicle make sure their vehicles are out front and you know for the night they can park out on central street um you know there's no no snow coming so they can yep. park on the street <laughs> schneider lot and can you just do a announcement yep okay yep we've been coordinating page sent something out to the um, yeah, I started on Facebook. Yeah. And That'll go up first thing tomorrow. Heather, Heather, <laughs> <laughs> your job right, got sorry. in the way. <laughs> Will the dumpsters um, ruin any of that if they if they go back in a couple of days? The weight no, of them, or it'll it'll cool pretty quickly. It okay. we haven't had those ninety degree summer days yet. Yeah. Um, well, we did, but it was back in April. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those two days. They're coming the end of the week. <laughs> so, um, no, we'll wait until it cools <laughs> off before we. Yeah. Um, so that uh, you know on that. There is some of the parking lot, you know, right up against the buildings. We're not going to be able to, with this paving company, do that work. So there is potential for future work to go back in there and do some of that handwork and actually address um, closer to the building that this company is not going to be able to get to within the budget that we have at this time. And one more thing while I got you. Yeah. All right. West Street. Yep. A couple of uh, complaints, a couple of <laughs> communication issues. Yep. So Maybe give us a quick update of what's going on. Sure. So West Street, they have finally moved past the campground. Um, the work, water main work, all the way up to the campground from South Street end is complete. There is a little bit of trench paving left. There's a couple hundred feet that has the binder on it, so it's down about an inch and a half. Um, that should be done by the end of the week, if not early next week. Um, the water main work now will continue up the hill past Daniel Street to the town line at um, Conant and Caton. Um, hoping that the water main itself is in the next two to three weeks and then they'll do all the services connections to that and then finish paving and be out of here by, I'm going to say it and I'm going to regret it, but I talked re hopefully August 1st, um, well before school buses start running again. Um, so we've been communicating. I was talking to Al Daniels this morning about the process. He's asked for a couple detour signs to be added into the mix along the way. So we've been accommodating that. Um, but that's from here on out the, for the remainder of the project. It's from the campground up to the town line is where they'll be working. So the other way going out of Normandy. So now the campers don't have to go up Mill Street, which is which is they can yeah. go straight out to straight South out Street. West. Yep, okay. yep. And they but were I think doing the that. The actual complaint was it Founders Day? It was given like to just generally out to us. It's, it's open, it's closed, it's open, it's closed. That, that there was, was a lot of bouncing window. around from, yeah. the, from the dam to the water main to services to paving to there was a lot of move, moving parts and it was tough yeah. to keep those updates going yeah. um, on a daily yeah, basis. Yeah, that you were doing it. It has, yeah. like it has to be done. It was just, yeah. just the, the communication of knowing if it was open or closed mm -hmm. was really yeah. the complaint. Right. So, so. so will that part of the road be closed? from um, so it'll be the, to the town line? During the day. Yeah. So it'll be a 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. closure. Um, and then when they're done working for the day, it'll open it'll back open up. It'll open back yep. up. Okay. So. Is there, so let's say, I can't, I mean, pull, turn around a camper's tough on that area where there's not a lot to turn around. Can they go up that neighborhood or no? They can. Okay. And we've what we've been doing is posting a, a police detail at the town line so that they can grab anybody who's coming in, figure out where they're, how far down they're going. Um, they'll know day to day where the contractor is working um, and they'll help those campers get turned around. Um, on Google Maps, I did talk to Rob Verdone and they did remove the road closure that had been placed at the dam location. So that helps people off of, of South Street knowing that they get in, can get in there. Um, I'm working with them to get a road closure from the other side just um, for the next month, six weeks or so. But unfortunately, there's that strip from Route 1 to our town border. <clears throat> right. That's sort of no man's land because yeah. we can't put the detail at Route 1. Right. We do have some road close signs post, posted closer to Route 1. 
Um, so they, uh, they are aware if, if they're trying to make that turn, they see it before they make it. Um, but once, if I can get Google Maps, if I can get Rob to adjust Google Maps in ways, um, then they, they won't even, GPS won't even tell them that they can come in that way. And what the campground does too is they send any, they send communication to any arriving guests that says, come in this way, do not come in this way. So for the last several months, um, they've been telling them come in off route one, that communication now changes and tells them to come in and out of South Street. So just clarification, not from Normandy Campground to South Street is open. Is open. Yes. Other ways closed. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. Great. All right. All right. Thank you. Chris. All right. <clears throat> All righty, town manager's update. Um, actually, uh, not much in the update uh, other than the transfers, uh, which is uh, you've got a memo in your packet um, regarding those transfers. And if it's the pleasure of the board, I'd walk you through that quickly. Yes, please. Okay. So there's a memo in your packet. Uh, this is the fiscal 2023 uh, year end transfers. Um, these are transfers that are needed at the end to close out the fiscal year where we've overexpended some budgets and maybe we've got some capacity in another budget. In some instances, it may even be capacity within an individual budget to go from an expense line to a personnel or personnel to expense. So uh, I think the first thing to point out, um, the, first of all, the memo, obviously I wasn't here for most of this, so the memo was prepared by the finance department. Um, but the most important thing going out right out of the gate is that uh, Within all of the budgets or within the overall budget, obviously we're going to finish in the black. There'll be a, a good amount of free cash, which is at the end of the fiscal year, and it's not certified yet. It's revenues that come in above what you budgeted, but also expenditures that come in below. So overall expenditures will come in below. <coughs> These transfers are needed just to make sure that individual lines are, uh, are not overexpended. Um, so in terms of the transfers, uh, first of all, um, we're not using any available funds, so we're not bringing any funding in from outside of the individual budget lines. Um, we're not hitting special revenue accounts or trust funds, and we're not hitting the emergency reserve account, which is at the front, front end, we have 75,000 for unexpected uh, expenditures. So we're not touching any of that. These are just transfers within uh, individual uh, budgets. On the second page, you'll see a summary of them. I'll walk you through them very quickly. Uh, there's a $3,000 uh, transfer needed in the town manager's budget, basically due to payouts from the private, the previous town administrator as well as the assistant when, uh, when they both departed. Uh, there's a $35,000 transfer in for uh, the finance office. This is for funding needed for consulting services for the interim uh, valuation, but also the pro EMS ambulance billing. It's an interesting concept here is as the fire department does more runs, uh, the ambulance billing service that we use sends out more bills, so they charge us more. So despite the fact that we need to transfer in to cover the, um, the billing, the revenues obviously that are coming in more than offset that. So this is just to take care of the, uh, the ambulance fees uh, for the billing portion of it. Um, there's some modifications that were made to the town clerk and the election workers, uh, uh, modification due to increases in minimum wage. So there's a $4,000 transfer into the town clerk elections budget. Um, there's a $71,000 transfer into uh, for land use. This is due to a essentially an employee going out on, uh, on uh, leave, ultimately taking a disability retirement. But in the interim, we had to backfill that position uh, with, a, with an inspector. So that was an unexpected um, an unexpected shortage in staffing that needed on a temporary basis to be backfilled. So that's the need for, for that transfer. So that includes the backfill? That's the backfill, yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, and then we have the central maintenance budget. This is primarily uh, an increase due to um, uh, gasoline and diesel expenses uh, increasing up during the duration of the uh, fiscal year, uh, causing that budget to be overexpended. Um, so we've made by the way, modifications to these budgets into fiscal 2024 to reflect these, uh, these price changes so this won't be a recurring problem next year. Um, the big one here is the fire department. is a $140,000 transfer in needed. Uh, my understanding is explained to me is this in part is due to some of the recent collective bargaining contracts that were settled, the stipends needed uh, that were increased that rippled through. 
Uh, and also there was some extraordinary repairs needed to some buyer apparatus uh, that was unplanned for. Um, there's a 27,000 transfer into the joint uh, public safety building. This was a change that was made um, mid fiscal year, I believe, to bring in a community response social worker into that department. So uh, that transfer is needed to offset that. There's a slight overage uh, in the street lighting, a budget of $10,000. Uh, so that transfer is needed. That budget's been modified moving into fiscal 24. Um, the library has, uh, and last but not least, we have $30,000 transfer from uh, salaries within the library to expenses. And basically this is to allow them to replace the carpet. Um, so this is within their budget. Uh, my understanding is that uh, proposal went to the, uh, went to the uh, capital planning uh, committee and that was all already been approved. So that transfer uh, from a capital planning standpoint is, was authorized and now we just need to perfect the actual transfer for budgetary purposes. In total, it's uh, $410,000 of transfers these don't require the board's vote or approval. Uh, these are uh, transfers that are allowed to be made at the staff level, at the, at, at the manager level. Um, but for transparency, we want to make sure that you're aware these transfers are being made and have some, some basic documentation as for the, the rationale behind them. So I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have. Um, but in order to, again, close out the fiscal year, these are transfers that will be needed to be made. Any questions? Did it, did it um, is this all coming from free cash? I know in the past when we were on advisory committee, we would see where, like, just say um, the police department had money left over. Yeah. Is it in so, not, so the last. Sometimes Bill would trans, transfer, it, transfer it over. Sure. That, no. that's, I was just curious. Yeah, it's it, in here. It, yep. Oh, oh, so there's okay. no so Steph, oh, there's, it's the second the second document. Yeah, there's okay. no there's no transfers in from free cash. We're not bringing any additional resources into the budget. We're mm -hmm. just essentially reallocating within yep. departmental budgets and in some cases between departmental mm -hmm. budgets to balance things out. So if a department if a budget had excess <laughs> left over and another department needed uh, they overexpended. We're just making that transfer. The last page has the, the details of this the transfers. This is the exact page I was looking yeah, at. The ins, yeah, the ins and outs are provided for you here. <laughs> uh, the reality is most of most transfers, when you get to the end of the fiscal year, more often than not, they're personnel related. Either somebody left or somebody went out on an illness and you had to backfill the position uh, on a temporary basis, or you settled a contract and you increased you know stipends and so forth. Uh, and that's primarily what these, uh, what these overages are. Anywhere where a budget was overexpended was something that you can really kind of plan a little bit better for, like say street lights, that's been ad adjusted to make sure that Every we're year. not. Every year, street lights are there. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> uh, but again, uh, you know, uh, we, own, we own the street lights, we own the maintenance, and sometimes you get a little extraordinary maintenance that's required. Um, you, you try to plan out what your average costs are, but you know, Sometimes you get this a isn't that more. bad. I thought the street lights a lot were like closer to fifty thousand. One time they're up as much as like seventy five thousand. Remember, so mm -hmm. ten thousand isn't really bad at all. Yeah. So those are transfers. Um, again, if there's any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. But uh, we're just transferring within budget. We're not increasing the overall budget at all. Uh, there's no modifications to bring revenues in. Um, just allows us to close out these lines and you know and you want to do this because you want these budgets to reflect what they actually spent uh, for planning purposes for subsequent years going forward okay great okay thank you John uh, selectman's update anybody have anything I, I just said um, <clears throat> you sent us a note about the fire engine the yes. accident last night you want to yeah that's good I say anything more about that uh, yes, unfortunately, uh, one of our engines was up on the highway and it was struck by a, uh, a, a passing by a motor vehicle. Uh, we're waiting on the police reports. I won't get into the details of, uh, of the accident itself, uh, but it was of no fault of any of our staff. Uh, so uh, it is an insurance claim. We're working through that process now. The good news is nobody was, was hurt, uh, significantly hurt. Uh, so it's damage to property. So now the big thing is for us to work through our insurance company to subrogate out, get the expenses back. And the bigger issue is, you know, uh, this isn't like your, you know, your Honda, you know, uh, Civic that you can take in and get fixed up. This is a very unique, uh, all custom vehicle. Uh, so it will require uh, time to order the parts and to get in the queue to get fixed. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, I met with the fire chief this afternoon. And we're looking at uh, probably four to six months before that piece of apparatus will be back in uh, to service. 
So we're looking at uh, the possibility of everything from uh, borrowing a, a, an extra ladder truck from a, another community to seeing about uh, whether or not the insurance will potentially cover uh, us um, pursuing a rental. So, uh, so we're looking at all those options uh, right now. But, uh, but again, uh, through no fault of our own, you know, it was an accident, uh, and uh, we'll be pursuing, as I said, to be made whole through uh, through either the driver's insurance and/or you know potentially our our, our coverage as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Founder's Day recap. <laughs> it was phenomenal. It was a great day. Uh, the weather was perfect. Yeah, weather was great. The uh, fireworks were great. The parade was great. Going down to the field was uh, a lot of fun. And um, kudos to the uh, Founders Day Committee. Uh, once again, they did absolutely a great job. A lot of young families out along the roadways. Um, it was packed. Um, and we all got a chance to be involved, which was great. Um, and just one other thing, uh, the Fox in the Borough. They're all in front of their uh, various places. Uh, I think that was a huge success. Um, see a lot of families over the weekends uh, walking around town, going to the various places uh, uh, for people to see uh, the foxes. Once again, uh, they are in front of uh, 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 Rodman Center, uh, Citizens Bank, Library, Town Hall, and the uh, YMCA. Uh, and each one is, a, is truly a work of art. And we're going to have, fill us in, uh, Christina, when's the um, sort of like the ribbon cutting? So we're doing an installation celebration as okay. they've all been installed. This, um, and thank you to the, the DPW, the crew there, did a really great job of doing that. They spent all day, I think, last Thursday doing it. And then this Thursday, I think, if they haven't already installed that, they will be. Um, we're going to be doing a ribbon cutting starting at the, or installation um, starting at the, YMCA and then moving to Citizens, the library, the uh, Maryland Robin Center, and then front of Town Hall, about 15 minutes in between, and just going to take a photo with all the sponsors, the artists, and anybody. So like for the library, the library director, and any of the um, trustees that would like to be there for Town Hall, we you know invited the DPW director and the staff that installed that, and just any everybody different um, that's, that was involved also will be, you know, cultural council members that made that happen just so they have a photo of it at their um, in each location. Can we just update what's on the homepage because it still tells you how yes. to how to apply for mm -hmm. one? And I've never got so many questions about the map <laughs> sure. and why they're there and what's going to happen. So, mm -hmm. um, if we can just update that, what's out there is from like January and it's just sure. it's old. And on a, a little bit of a sad note, um, one of our long-term term board members, uh, Dave Brown, passed away over the weekend. Um, you know, our condolences go out to. Uh, uh, his family uh, at this moment. Uh, any other from, okay, let's do uh, All right, action items. Action item. All right, so we've got five action items. Motion to accept $668 donation for the Senior Olympic T-shirts from the Friends of Foxborough Seniors. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve the one-year earth removal permit extension to July 19th, 2024 for the Massachusetts Electric Company at 63 Elm Street site. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion to appoint Thomas Murphy as the planning board alternate to, for a term to end May 31st, 2024. Second. Any further discussion? All those Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion to approve the 31 commercial parking licenses for fiscal year 2024 as more particularly described in, on the back page of the posted agenda from June 20th, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? Just oh, co confirming, yeah. Katie, that everyone, all the departments, police, fire, building, finance, no outstanding issues, kind of like Seth, you brought up, you know, on the, mm. the other ones, just making sure that we close the loop there. Yep, everyone is <clears throat> on board. I talked to finance this morning. And there was only one outstanding water bill for all 31 lots. Um, and so that check will be dropped off um, by the end of this week. So the license will be sent out till then. But that was really the only outstanding um, invoice. So finance was great. Scott and Paige were great. Um, there were six lots that had um, special permitting. That was done May 11th. Those are good for another three years. 
Um, so it really was just <laughs> kind of like a team effort on making sure that every department was signed off, everyone was good to go. So um, we I sent over just some stats just comparative to last year. So, um, yeah, we're looking pretty good. Awesome. All those in favor? Aye. All right. And then we have two minutes. Motion to approve the May 23rd, 2023 select board meeting minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I wasn't Ooh. at one of them. Do we have the one that I wasn't at? I forget what date it was. 25th, uh, I think I took them off, but I, I can The 23rd. Check. I yeah. think I... May 23rd, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, and I'm not there. Yep, Ian Fitzgerald. There he is. That's why there was an extra member there was our selectman for a day. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Motion to approve June 6, 2023, select board meeting minutes. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I Aye. wasn't there. Right. You can still vote, though. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right, so just a motion to adjourn. Seth? Second. Motion to adjourn. Yep. Second. Second. Was already made? Yep. Oh, second. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night. And we're not back until we skip one now. So. The 11th? July 11th. July 11th. July 11th. So have a great uh, 4th of July week.